including a branch code on 1st January 2021. Housing construction for Nai Nisha Bhutan. Tunnel ke jariye. Monolithic concrete construction. Technology ka uptrop kare. France ki is technology se. Hame gati bhi milegi. Aur ghar. Aapdaon ko jhelne mein jada saksham bhi banegi. Work on Lighthouse Project Rajkot started in all 11 towers, which are now in different stages of construction. This video briefly shows the progress of this project till date, an already established system for building construction in many countries. Monolithic concrete construction system replaced the conventional steel or plywood shuffling formwork system with customized engineered system. Two half shelves made of steel are placed together to form a room or shell, and several such shelves make the apartment. In tunnel form system, walls and slabs are cast together monolithically in a single day. Tunnel forms are used over foundation with necessary reinforcement to cast walls and slabs together using designed concrete. The sequence of construction includes stripping of the formwork on the previous day. It's positioning for the current day phase with the installation of electrical and plumbing services, placement of the reinforcement for the wall and slabs, and then concreting. Construction of LHB Raj Road was started with excavation of site, mostly rocky, and removing the boulders and soil, followed by laying of plain cement concrete, putting work, shear wall, casting of flint beam, and backfilling to complete the substructure. As the substructure was completed in a tower, superstructure work was started by placing customized two set of tunnel form simultaneously with reinforcement and placing of service pipes as per the design, and then building concrete to complete one floor in a day. Following the same process, casting of eight out of eleven towers have already been completed, and works on shell remaining three towers are in different stages. Sir, we will share it here. I think there is some internet issue there. Please continue. The center, a old Can I share it again? Do you want sharing? A sample flat with all amenities in Tower 8 is ready for showcasing to the beneficiaries and other stakeholders. With completion of about 70% work, the project... Sharing Manish, or shall I share it again? Manish? I will share from my answer. Uh, okay, okay, sorry for the glitch. There was some problem again. Uh, Manish is sharing it. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India, has initiated Global Housing Technology Challenge in India to identify and mainstream best available global technologies so as to bring paradigm shift in the construction sector. 54 innovative technologies put in six broad categories were shortlisted during the challenge process. 
six lighthouse projects at six locations with six distinct technologies are being constructed. Lighthouse project using monolithic concrete construction technology with tunnel form consisting of 1144 houses in S plus 13 configurations. All basic and social infrastructure facilities is being constructed at Rajkot in partnership with State Government of Gujarat. Honorable Prime Minister laid the foundation stone of six lighthouse projects, including at Rajkot on 1st January 2021. Today, housing construction को नई दिशा दिखाएंगे राजकोट में टनल के जरिए मोनोलिथिक कंक्रीट कंस्ट्रक्शन इस टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग करेंगे फ्रांस की इस टेक्नोलॉजी से हमें गति भी मिलेगी और घर आपदाओं को झेलने में ज्यादा सक्षम भी बनेगा Work on Lighthouse Project Rajkot started in all 11 towers, which are now in different stages of construction. This video briefly shows the progress of this project till date. An already established system for building construction in many countries. Monolithic concrete construction system replaced the conventional steel or plywood shuttering formwork system with customized engineered system. Two half shelves made of steel are placed together to form a room or shell and several such shelves make the apartment. In tunnel form system, walls and slabs are cut together monolithically in a single day. Tunnel forms are used over foundation with necessary reinforcement to cast walls and slabs together using designed concrete. The sequence of construction includes stripping of the formwork on the previous day. It's positioning for the current day phase with the installation of electrical and plumbing services, placement of the reinforcement for the wall and slabs, and then concreting. Construction of LHP Rajkot was started with excavation of site, mostly rocky, and removing the boulders and soil, followed by laying of plain cement concrete, footing work, shear wall, casting of plinth beam, and backfilling to complete the substructure. As the substructure was completed in a tower, superstructure work was started by placing customized two set of tunnel form simultaneously with reinforcement and placement of service pipes as per the design, and then pouring concrete to complete one floor in a day. Following the same process, casting of eight out of 11 towers have already been completed and works on shell remaining three towers are in different stages. While the superstructure is progressing in different towers, masonry work using AAC blocks, construction of stairs, fixing of electrical and plumbing services, lift installation, fixing of door and window frames, internal and external plasters, and painting are being done in a planned manner. Simultaneously, infrastructure works of drainage, sewerage, internal road, underground water tank, Construction of compound walls are also going on. Of infrastructure, including Anganbari, complex, and community center, are also going on in full swing. A sample flat with all amenities in Tower 8 is ready for showcasing to the beneficiaries and other stakeholders. With completion of about 70% work, the project is likely to be completed very soon for handing over to already identified beneficiaries. The Lighthouse Project Rajkot is serving as live laboratory for learning and knowledge dissemination. About 300 technographies and other stakeholders have visited the site to learn the use of innovative technology in real project at site. Okay, you can stop sharing now. Okay, uh, so uh, this this was all about the lighthouse project at Rajkot. Now, before moving into the specifics of uh, technology being used in Rajkot and uh, the progress and uh, taking you to the virtual tour, 
Uh, I would like to explain you the 54 new technologies which we have shortlisted, their categories, and I, I would like to uh, explain you uh, uh, very quickly uh, that what kind of systems we have in India and what kind of systems we, we are trying to bring. So I will just share my screen and make a presentation uh, for you. Is it visible? Is it coming? Visible, eh? Please continue. Yes, so yes, sir, visible. And uh, please, I humbly request everyone to mute their uh, mics so that you can listen to me. And as uh, Kuldeep Sir was explaining, this uh, just just one second, Agarwal ji. Yes, sir. यहाँ पे directorate में जो कोई बैठे हों कोई एक आदमी लगातार को host बनकर ये control करते रहें कि कोई आदमी अगर unmute करता है अपने आप को कोई not supposed to speak उसको mute कर दें. Sure, sure. Uh, so, Manish, uh, I think Pooja is the uh, administrator, system administrator. So, Pooja, if you find someone, if you are there, uh, then please um, uh, mute the person who is uh, trying to unmute. We will do that, sir. We are on it. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, this is just, um, uh, you know, the banner of our live laboratories uh, uh, seminars, which we are starting from uh, today. And as Kuldeep Sarwal is explaining you, this is a joint venture uh, of Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, uh, BMTPC and GIZ. And uh, through these webinars, we will not only be taking you through the innovative construction systems being used uh, uh, in India in these different in these lighthouse projects, but also we will be touching a very important to topic of climate smart buildings and uh, you know thermally comfortable uh, buildings. Okay, so I, I just want to briefly tell you the, the initiative taken by government of India. You might be hearing this word global housing technology challenge time and again. Uh, Time and again, so, you know, the, in 2019, uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs conducted global housing te uh, technology challenge at the behest of Honorable Prime Minister, because he was very keen to bring para paradigm shift in the construction sector. And this global housing technology challenge was organized on 2nd and 3rd March 2019, and um, it was inaugurated by uh, Honorable Prime Minister, and we invited uh, all the global players uh, working in the area of construction sector and uh, uh, implementing innovative technologies. It was a huge success that Global Housing Technology Challenge, and through that uh, technology challenge, we uh, shortlisted uh, 54 uh, new construction systems, which I am going to show you now. I think it is not one minute. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So the, through that Global Housing Technology Challenge, where um, more than 100 companies uh, from India as well as abroad participated, we uh, through a techn uh, you know technique uh, technology evaluation uh, we uh, constituted a committee called TEC Technical Evaluation Committee, which was headed by uh, DGCPWD, comprising of members from uh, research and academic organizations, uh, including our PSUs. We shortlisted 54 new construction systems and what we have done is we have uh, you know divided these new construction systems 54 of them into these six distinct uh, uh, categories and uh, i will be explaining you through pictures uh, these six uh, distinct categories so these six lighthouse projects which we are uh, presenting to you um, through this webinar and also by making physical visits to these sites through exposure visits they are being done by one of uh, you know uh, one of the categories so at each place, one category is being used. Like, for example, in Rajkot, we are using monolithic con uh, concrete construction using tunnel form. If we go to Indore, uh, we are using um, sandwich panel system with the steel structure. Uh, in Lucknow, we are using a stay in place formwork system. So, uh, this is the category. And let me just. Uh... Okay, uh, what we have um, the, the, the most popular construction system, if you look at the construction um, uh, sector, are these two. Uh, normally, if you go to villages and tier uh, uh, two and tier three cities where we have isolated houses 
or um, the low rise structures their houses are normally made with brick or stone uh, masonry so normally wa uh, uh, walls are made and over that cast in situ slabs are being um, laid otherwise the most popular or ubiquitous system across the world is this rcc frame construction where um, you know you uh, cast in situ rcc uh, columns and beams are cast and over that uh, you know a slab is laid and then you fill um, you infill the walls uh, uh, through brick uh, masonry or uh, any other kind of blocks and over the time it has been found um, if you look at this uh, slide that um, uh, there is too much dependency on cement aggregate and water uh, uh, particularly sand um, and nowadays sand is very scarce also water uh, is to be used very optimally because what water is also quite scarce and if we talk about cement cement uh, is not a green material it emits greenhouse gas emissions so we have to optimize the use of cement as well also during covid time and we all know that uh, there is acute shortage of skilled labor force so we have to employ industrialized building systems which can help uh, and we have to bring in some sort of uh, automation in the sector also you know the kind of construction uh, using the, the the systems which are involved that is rcc frame construction uh, quality is normally compo uh, com uh, compromised um, uh, nowadays in the, the backdrop of uh, climate change uh, and you know uh, we are talking about sustainable development whatever construction we do uh, we, it has to be green and uh, the, the kind of conventional construction is uh, not green and uh, also the the, the the kind of techniques we employ they are not energy uh, uh, energy efficient so we have to have uh, you know systems and technologies and processes which are eco friendly energy efficient and also uh, you know as uh, kuldeep sir was telling you resource efficiency is also required and when we talk about resource efficiency uh, it means it is uh, material efficiency as well as human resource efficiency um, also another important thing is uh, most of these all of you know that the the, the conventional construction systems are slow track construction normally um, most of the, uh, the projects are caught in time over and cost over and through these innovative construction systems uh, you know uh, you can uh, deliver uh, the project deliver the housing pretty fast and uh, time can be reduced from um, 10 10 percent to 50 percent in fact uh, through this virtual tour, we will be showing you that uh, the project which we are doing in Rajkot, uh, in three days, the entire floor is being uh, laid. So primarily, uh, the conventional construction system are slow track. Then by introducing these new construction systems, uh, we bring in speed, uh, we provide quality houses. Uh, these houses are safe as far as uh, you know, disaster resilience is concerned. Uh, all of you know that India is the country where we have uh, yeah, cyclones, uh, thunderstorms, floods. So you know, you have to design your structure um, for disaster resistance. So all these technologies ensure uh, safety of the house or the, the structure which we are building. Sustainability, as I told you, is a very important thing, and sustainability entails yeah. Energy efficiency, eco friendliness, um, you know, less uh, uh, low carbon footprint, less emission of greenhouse gas in uh, greenhouse gases, and uh, at the same time, reduction in waste. Also, uh, you know, because we have wrote in. Um, uh, GIZ and GIZ uh, will be talking in uh, detail um, uh, through other webinars regarding the functional performance of these building and how we can improve using these innovative construction systems. How can we, you know, enhance the thermal comfort uh, uh, of these houses which we are constructing? Now, uh, as I showed you in the first slide, that we have divided uh, the entire. Uh, uh, 54 technologies into these six uh, categories. I will just explain you these six categories through pictures. You, you see, so first category is 3D volumetric construction, which is being employed uh, in our lighthouse project uh, at Rachi. And as you can see from this slide, uh, you know, cast in C2 RCC construction, frame construction is being replaced by uh, this kind of uh, uh, volumetric construction where the 70 to 80 percent of the house or a room or a module is made in the factory and then these uh, modules are put one over the other like uh, lego blocks you know as a kid uh, kids normally play with blocks and they put one block over the other to uh, create a desired shape so in a similar fashion uh, you, you can you know the, pass these modules in the factory and then put them one over the, the other so we'll be taking you to the lhp site at rachi we are at rachi site itself they have, um, you know, um, established a casting yard, and where this uh, these modules are being uh, being cast. And in these modules, you can, you know, you can put the the door, window frames, and you can um, put other accessories, services uh, if you require, if you want. Uh, 
So this is first category and you can see all these pictures are from uh, um, India. And as you can see, this is a picture from Bangalore where the entire module, which is a finished module with the window and all is being hosted over the already laid uh, the one block. And, and this is a roof uh, thing. So this is a tapered thing also. Um, this is how it takes place. Uh, the, I will just show you these pictures. Now, um, there, there, there were four companies uh, who were shortlisted through Global Housing Technology Challenge, and um, they, they, they are written here. One is Katera, another one is Modocast. Magic Read Solution is the is the technology provider and uh, the build uh, contractor who is doing a project and lighthouse project using this 3D volumetric construction. Uh, next category is uh, 2D volumetric construction. The difference between two is in both the things we make the structural components in the factory. In the first uh, category, the entire room or entire module, it is called room module or a pod element. They are being cast together. So it's a 3D. Here you make various structural elements. So it can be wall, it can be facade, it can be beam, it can be column, it can be slab, it can be staircase. Uh, Yes. So here, 2D structural elements and other elements, even sunshade. Uh, so all these elements are cast in a casting yard or in the factory, uh, then transported to the site and then assembled at the site to uh, dry in bed joint day. This particular technology is being used in uh, Lighthouse Project Chennai, and we'll be taking you to that site also and to explain you the various nuances of uh, this 2D precast construction. Uh, you can see here, so these are different elements. You see these, these, these are called pod elements. Uh, so the entire uh, 3D structure is made and um, these are different kind of elements. You can have wall panels, you can have parapet beams, you can have spandrel, solid slab or hollow port slab and this is that staircase uh, thing. Okay, so as you can see, you can have hollow slab, you can have this kind of precast uh, staircase uh, kind of thing. Okay, so there were eight companies which were shortlisted through Global Housing Technology Challenge and all these um, the technologies which are written here on the left hand side, they are, <coughs> they are approved uh, not only uh, by us, uh, by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, but also have been approved by uh, CPWD so that, uh, that they can be used in the construction sector. So there were around eight companies, um, including the very big companies like LNT, Shirke, uh, Teamage, and Alimatic India. Uh, next category we move on uh, is steel and light gauge steel structural system. Here, instead of using RCC frame, uh, construction you use a uh, steel, um, you know, steel skeleton. So here, beam and columns are made with steel, and these steel uh, built-up sections, or you can have girders, you have, you can have eye sections or channel sections. These sections or these steel sections are, um, you know, fabricated, manufactured in the factory. And then from factory, all you have to do is you have to bring those, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, structural components or beam and columns uh, to the site and then start erecting them. At present, and uh, three, three projects, we are using uh, this kind of steel structure. One is in LHP Indore, one is in LHP Lucknow, and the third one is at LHP Agartala. So all the, these three places, these steel, um, um, you know, the beam and columns are cast in the factory and from there, from there, uh, they are being transported and then erected like this. Okay. This is a closure look. And in Agartala, what we are doing is uh, we are using a light gauge steel, which I will also explain to you. So, infill wall is of uh, light gauge. I so think this is a typical uh, picture. Screen sharing is off. Uh, I think your screen sharing is off. I think you need to start your screen sharing. Okay. Again, I will do this. Sorry. So, one minute. I will do it again. Is it Is it visible now? Is it visible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry for the glitches. You know, my system administrator is not here today, so I have to do the entire thing myself. So that is why these glitches are coming. So I was trying to explain you, and this is again a picture uh, from Andhra Pradesh where, you know, after Hood Cyclone, this technology was uh, uh, proposed. And here we are using a steel uh, uh, skeleton, and this infill is dry wall. Okay, this is AC. Another uh, category uh, uh, under this steel structure system is light gauge steel um, filming system here. Uh, you know, instead of that um, uh, hot rolled steel uh, beam and column, we are using this kind of light 
we uh, galvanized uh, uh, steel sections and they are uh, that is why because being lightweight they are called light gauge and this is galvanized steel and be very thin in section it offers a very uh, economical uh, design so this this uh, technology uh, along with the steel structure system is being used in Alatala. So I think it is clear from this picture. So again, uh, the basic premise is uh, that the conventional RCC frame construction is being replaced by these kind of light gauge steel structure system. And um, you know, the, being in light, it can be lifted by a small uh, crane. And at present, this technology is recommended up to three to four story. But if you want to go high rise, you can have a high rise structure the way we are doing uh, in uh, uh, you know Alatala. And you know that to, to, to create the walls, you have to put uh, fiber cement board on both the sides of this light gauge steel structure system and fill it with the rock pool or mineral pool. And um, you know, I'm going pretty fast, but what you can do is uh, uh, on you can go, you can note down the gstc-india.gov.in website. You can go to this website and get all the details about these technologies, including audiovisual capsules, films. You can go to uh, BMTBC channel as well, where you can find the dedicated films in pedagogy uh, on, on, on all these uh, technologies. So through this global housing technology challenge, we shortlisted 16 uh, these kind of systems which are promoting steel uh, and uh, light gauge steel system. And you can see some of the big names here, Everest India. You can see. You can see. You are able to see now? Yeah. So you can see Everett, uh, Everest India, GS, Tindal Steel, um, and uh, there are other companies as well um, who are into this light gauge and steel structure system. The fourth category is precast sandwich panel system. It is a system where, you know, if you look at the left hand side, you find uh, these are the, the typical conventional walling system, and this walling system uh, make use of brick then mortar, and then you do the plaster. How about replacing these kind of uh, walls by a dry wall construction or a sandwich panel system? So there are umpteen number of companies and there are a number of manufacturers who are making these sandwich panel systems, um, which I'll be showing you. So the basic premise is we are replacing the typical uh, brick walling system or stone weaponry system by this ready, ready made factory made dry walls. And they are called sandwich panel system because you know, uh, you have a, a, a core which is a lighter in weight and uh, the, that, that core is sandwiched between two layers uh, two outer skins. Those outer skins can be fiber cement board, it can be yeah. it can be yeah. calcium silicate board. So you can see here, so this brick wall is being replaced by this kind of uh, dry wall. And as I told you, there are a um, number of alternatives um, for this dry wall sandwich panel system. So, and these uh, walls are made in the factory. This precast sandwich panel system um, we are using in uh, Lighthouse Project Indoor and we'll be taking you to that uh, uh, site as well. And you can see this is, so as I told you, there are a number of companies who are doing it and there are different kinds of sandwich panel system. Um, uh, this is one of them. It is called EPS core panel system. And as you can see here, the white thing that is EPS, which is called expanded polystry. And if you are not able to make out what is EPS, EPS is kind of thermocode. Okay, thermocol is of very, very is of very lighter, uh, light density, whereas this EPS is of higher density. If I have to compare then 10, 10 to 15 kg per meter cube is the, uh, sorry, 1, kg, 1 to 5 kg per meter cube is the density of thermal code, whereas this EPS has the density 15 kg per meter cube. And as you can see, um, this uh, panel system can be used uh, as a single wall panel system, double wall panel system. It can be used, if you see um, um, in the left bottom, it can be used as a slab or a floor, it can be used as a staircase. And then on both the sides, you can do the gniting, you can do the plaster, you can put up fiber cement board or a gypsum board as per your requirement like this. So this is this is how it is being the, the entire wall panel is being erected. Just to show you, this is how the wall, uh, the, the floor is being laid. And this is the technology I was talking about. Uh, uh, under Plica sandwich panel system, uh, this is a rising EPS uh, cement panel, uh, which is being used in uh, lighthouse project at Indoor. And because this is a high rise structure, so this panel is used as infill along with a steel structure system. So there were around nine companies uh, which were shortlisted through Global Housing Ch Technology Challenge, and all these companies are written here. And um, the, 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 the technology which is being used in uh, uh, Lighthouse Project LHV Indoor is of Rising Japan Infra Private Limited, and technology being used is EPS cement uh, sandwich panel system. 
The next category uh, is the one which we are using in uh, Rajkot, and uh, there are very, you know, there are uh, a number of generic names to this technology. It is called monolithic concrete construction technology. It is um, called uh, for fast stack construction technology, and most of you might be knowing this technology with uh, aluminium form work system. And here in Rajkot, we are using it, uh, um, this technology in a unique way, uh, employing the tunnel form work. So the tunnel form work, we will take you through the virtual tour of the um, the site, and I think the technology provider as well as the contractor, Mr. Malani, is also there. So if they want, they can also present um, the, in the last session about this. So here, what we are doing is we are making the customized form work. This form work is normally made either of aluminium or, or of steel, and this this customized form work is being uh, placed um, over the reinforcement cage, and then the concreting is being done, and then um, one or two days you remove this form work and take to the next floor. So uh, as I was telling you, in three days. Uh, in uh, Rajkot using tunnel form work, uh, they are, uh, you know, finishing one floor. Okay. And this is the most widely used technology in India. And th this is a closure look you can see. So uh, after placing the reinforcement and for all these construction systems we are talking about, we have conventional uh, foundation. So we come up to the plinth level and after the plinth level, we start um, using these uh, innovative construction systems. So here, as you can see, this customized form work is put over the already laid reinforcement and then the slab reinforcement is put and then you do the, uh, the, the pouring. This is that uh, tunnel form, uh, which we'll be showing you today, uh, which is being used in LHP Rajkot. So there were around nine companies uh, uh, shortlisted through Global Housing Technology Challenge. And uh, you can see we are um, in Rajkot, we are using Ortinard, and I think representative from Ortinard, their MD uh, Gignacho is all uh, is also there. Uh, so this is a French based um, French technology uh, which uses tunnel form. Um, system and uh, in addition to uh, this, there are other companies like uh, S forms, innovative and MFS uh, concrete systems. The next, let's move to next category. Next category is the stain place form work system, which we are using um, uh, in uh, uh, Lucknow. Um, as you can see, this is this kind of technology. So, you know, the conventional brick walling system can be replaced by uh, this kind of, um, uh, um, you know, a stained place form work system. Why it is called a stained place form work system? Because our, um, initial stages, it acts as a form work for the structure and later it, it acts as a part of the structure. And, uh, you know, this cavity, which you see, it can be filled either with concrete or lightweight concrete or with any other filler material, depending upon the requirement. So this is just a closure look. And uh, uh, this particular technology uh, we are using in one of the demonstration housing project in uh, Bhopal, um, where a load bearing structure is being created with this kind of stain place form work system. Yeah. Uh, this, there is another form of this technology, which is of this kind, where um, form work system is being used as a reinforcement. And the uh, technology which is being used in uh, Lucknow, which is the first of its kind and uh, first time in India being used, this is called PVC wall form. These are pre-finished wall forms which are made in the factory and uh, they can be, you know, uh, made um, with, uh, with the color of your choice. So it is, you know, the, the skin is of PVC and uh, in between what you see is the hollow cavities. And we'll, we'll be taking you through uh, uh, to Lighthouse Project at Lucknow where we'll be showing you uh, in detail this technology. And you see uh, these uh, wall panels are erected in subtraction through tongue and groove and slide and lock arrangement. And then depending upon height and depending Depending upon your project requirement, you can fill these cavities either with concrete or lightweight concrete. And this particular technology, which uh, we are using in Lucknow, because it's a high rise structure, uh, we are using this in a hybrid fashion. Hybrid fashion means we are using a structural skeleton, and this PVC wall form is used as an infill. And this wall form, this the cavity is being filled with um, you know, the, the M10 uh, concrete plate. There were around eight companies uh, which were shortlisted, and uh, these companies are written here. And now, uh, the Lucknow project is uh, the uh, Novel Assembler. Where is it? Yeah. So the fourth one, you can see that is a Novel Assembler. Um, is the company. <laughs> So this is just this was just very quickly to explain you the six categories and those 54 technologies which we are shortlisted. And right now we are doing six lighthouse projects at these places in the large court today. Um, we'll be discussing in detail this large court project and uh, then later we'll be conducted webinars as well as, uh, you know, field exposure visits to other sites also to explain you these technologies. And I, I, I sincerely hope that you might have uh, through my presentation, although it was very quick, but uh, through this, you might have understood 
the various categories. And in fact, you can download the presentation and films from our website to uh, take a deep dive into all these technologies. And as uh, we have been telling, we are treating these projects as live laboratories to impart um, awareness, education uh, to the, um, the professionals and uh, other stakeholders in our country and to build capacities uh, in the country so that these technologies become the technologies for the future. And all these lighthouse projects were uh, inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister on 1st January 2021. And we wanted to complete this project by the year, and um, um, uh, but couldn't uh, do it because of uh, COVID uh, scenario. And very soon we'll be completing this, uh, all these projects. Uh, okay. Now, this uh, just very quickly, uh, this is a, a project at Chennai, and this is the progress at Chennai. Then this is at Rajkot. Anyway, we'll be taking you through the tour of this uh, project at Chennai um, in Indore. Um, so as I was telling you, this is a hybrid structure, and what you see in this, uh, this slide is a steel structure, and uh, then you have a, a sandwich panel system, and what you see in slab is a deck slab. This is a project in Lucknow. Uh, and then this is an Agartala. Agartala again, we are using live VHC structure system. Rachi, the project is just started and uh, they have set up a casting yard and here they will be making the entire module, uh, the uh, reinforced concrete module in the casting yard and then it will be put one over other to create the multi-story tower. And um, then we are also, you know, uh, uh, working with all the state governments and uh, 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 promoting and mainstreaming these uh, technologies. Uh, and these 54 technologies, as I told you, have already been approved by us as well as by CPWD. And for most of these technologies, uh, Delhi schedule of rate has also been brought out along with the specifications by CPWD. So if you want to uh, go to, if you want to see or interested in the uh, schedule of rate or specifications, uh, you can download download that uh, from the website of uh, CPWD. Um, this is the last slide. Uh, our sincere attempt is uh, to, you know, bring paradigm shift and uh, this word uh, we have been using quite frequently. So by paradigm shift, uh, I mean uh, to take you to these level three and level four. Uh, if you look at this slide, you will find that at present, the construction is at level zero in India, where uh, level zero is what, uh, where we, you know, assemble, we first buy the, procure the material, whether it is cement, steel, aggregate, we gather the machineries and all those things at the site, um, we call the contractor, call the labor, put the form work, put the reinforcement, and then do the, ca um, the casting, remove the form work, do the curing, and um, um, do the work. So, uh, no, actually, this is very slow track construction, time consuming, a lot of waste is being generated, and is not amenable uh, to the environment as well and it is not energy efficient so we want to replace this system by this level three and level four where the entire operations which you are doing at the site can be done in the the factory 60 to 70 percent or 80 percent work can be done in the factory and um, all you have to do is you have to transport it uh, to the site and assemble them and um, through this slide i also want to stress upon you that uh, the, the the companies which we showed you the the the, the technology providers we shortlisted already they are there in india and uh, uh, they are practicing this level three and level four in fact, in the LHP Rachi, they are making homes which are called plug and play homes where 70% of the, um, you know, the entire module work is being done in the factory. So that is all uh, about the, 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 the journal and uh, we will just uh, have a break of two minutes uh, uh, and then we will uh, take you, uh, we'll make a technical presentation on uh, Lighthouse Project at uh, uh, Rajkot. So we'll just uh, take a break of two minutes. In the meantime, uh, you can also, if you have any questions, uh, you can write your questions in the, 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 the in the chat box, and uh, we will uh, take those questions uh, in the question and answer session, uh, which will be of, uh, which will be in the, 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 the later part of this uh, webinar. Again, so, no, sh stop sharing that. So, so having visible, yeah. 
fact, uh, the, uh, welcome again. In fact, if you have uh, some questions to ask, you can write in your chat box because uh, we won't be able to take your questions by asking you to speak. Uh, so what you can do in the chat box, you can write uh, the queries, questions, or any others. If you have any uh, suggestions uh, or any other submission to make, uh, you can make that in the chat box and uh, in the later uh, uh, part of the webinar, uh, we'll be uh, taking uh, up those questions. Okay. So before taking uh, you through the virtual tour of uh, LHP site at Rathcourt, I will very briefly explain you the system which is being used in the, um, uh, this particular Lighthouse project site. In fact, you will be seeing, so that will be explained to you better once you see uh, uh, the, the live webcasting and um, the live feed of the project site. We have at the project site, the, the Malani Construction Company will be taking you through that virtual tour. But before that, let me just explain you very quickly uh, the theory. Uh, part of uh, the technology which is being used at Rajkot. And uh, just to sum up what I just now explained to you before this lecture was the uh, those 54 technologies and uh, their categories which, uh, uh, you know, were shortlisted uh, through Global Housing Technology Challenge. And, you know, as we have been telling everyone that uh, we have created a basket of these 54 technologies. And as per your requirement and uh, as per your project size, as per uh, your time and, um, you know, finances available, you can choose any of these technologies. Also, depending upon the geoclimatic conditions suiting to your requirement, you can pick uh, one of these technologies because these technologies give you better alternative um, whether you talk about resource efficiency, whether you talk about the speed, whether you talk about energy efficiency, whether you talk about thermal comfort, functional performance, and rather I would say they are also disaster resilient uh, um, as well as uh, provide uh, you better indoor air quality. Okay, so let me explain you Rajkot project. Uh, this already we explained, and uh, this is just a slide. Here we are using this tunnel formwork and thousand um, uh, one forty four houses in still plus thirteen configuration um, uh, are being made. So this is a layout. Anyway, we'll take you to the um, uh, to, to the tour. So you can see here there are uh, um, S plus thirteen is the the, the the structure. You know, um, uh, story height, um, and uh, there are eleven residential blocks as you can see from this slide. Uh, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are 11 blocks. And if you want to know, this is a typical floor plan um, of uh, one floor. And as, as I was telling you, that the entire floor is being, um, you know, cast in uh, three days by Malani Construction using this thermal form technology. And at each floor, we have eight dwelling units. And like this, we have 14 story. And um, the, the, the total houses are uh, 144. One, four. Just uh, I wanted to show you this also. This is a typical uh, dwelling unit layout and the carpet area is slightly on the higher side because in the state of Gujarat they are using the carpet area um, of 39, 35 to 39 whereas uh, in other parts of the state it is around 30, uh, 30 square meters. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is the typical dwelling unit uh, plan and you can see its 3D view is here and it comprises of a living room, a bedroom, a kitchen, um, a study room uh, and a toilet. Also uh, remember one more thing that all these uh, plans which we um, are, um, you know, all these plans are as per National Building Code norms. So there is a National Building Code 2016, which uh, gives guidelines um, as regards minimum size of the room, uh, the minimum height of the floor, um, uh, and uh, the, the minimum width of the kitchen, toilet, balcony. So it uh, all these plans comply to the National Building Code. Um, in addition to the compliance to National Building Code, the other special features are also being incorporated in all these lighthouse projects, and uh, some of them are written here. As you can see, the, uh, we are talking about um, you know energy efficiency, eco friendliness, and uh, so we are using the renewable resources, rainwater harvesting, and so solar lighting. When we talk about solar lighting, all street lightings are to be done with solar lighting. Solid waste management is also part and parcel of all the lighthouse projects which we are doing. And for all these bigger bigger projects where we have thousand plus houses, you need to have the uh, you know STP and uh, through the STP whatever wastewater you are treating, that treated water need to be recycled. So it is called wastewater management, and through this wastewater management, that wastewater need to be uh, again put to use uh, for secondary purposes like gardening for, uh, and flushing. 
So all these uh, features are being uh, included in these lighthouse projects as well. Also, what we have done is we have also, you know, made uh, make it uh, made it mandatory uh, to take a green rating. So minimum green rating of uh, three, 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 three star green rating is the minimum green rating uh, which need to be we, we, we achieve uh, for all these projects. And this is the tunnel form. I think uh, through picture, uh, it has already been explained to you. And uh, again and again, I wanted to stress upon this point that we are trying to replace the the, the construction system which are in play, which are in practice at present in India, which is brick masonry or stone masonry and cast in situ frame construction. Because there, there, there is a lot of waste, air pollution, water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, soil crack, and all these systems can be replaced by those systems which I just explained to you. And these are these. Uh, they, they, this is just a. Uh, um, you know, sequence, you have a tunnel form, which tunnel form is, you know, as per your project requirement, it is customized and made in the factory. So for this project, the, this, this customized form work was made in the Pune um, uh, through Otinard. Uh, they are the technology provider. And then this system is brought to the side and there over the reinforcement, uh, um, you know, you put this um, the, the tunnel form and do the concreting of uh, wall as well as slab. And then you get this kind of tunnels. And why it is called tunnel form? Because what at the end of the day, what you get is these kind of tunnels and these outer walls are filled with the infill, which I, which also will be showing you the, the through AAC blocks. And this is how this concreting is being done. And we are calling it monolithic construction because uh, the entire construction is done um, in a single operation or through a single pore. So all the walls and uh, slab are cast together. So there are no jointing and it provides a monolithic construction. Monolithic construction means it is integral. Struck, you know, slab and walls are integrated together and cast together. So uh, I will explain you foundation structure system um, that, uh, in this. So this is a foundation as uh, um, uh, um, in my earlier lecture, I told you that the foundation here is conventional. And when you are using these kind of chair wall and slab system, normally uh, the foundation is raft here. You can't uh, use isolated footings uh, because normally isolated footing is used, uh, combined footings are being used uh, when you use the framed structure. So here it is a kind of raft and raft, as you all understand, it is a kind of slab. So this is uh, this is that uh, raft is being put over that shear walls are being put and once you reach the plinth uh, level at the plinth level you cast plinth beam and over that plinth um, uh, beam uh, you start employing uh, this uh, tunnel form of work system. Okay, and again the thickness, the design, the the reinforcement required, all these things are um, you know calculated as per Indian relevant Indian standards and as per geotechnical investigation. So before any project is being initiated or started, geotechnical investigation is must, which gives you uh, the soil uh, uh, profile, its bearing capacity, water table, and depending upon. Similarly, you know uh, how deep you have to go. So depth of the foundation is also ascertained through those geotechnical uh, investigations. So as you can see. Uh, this is how it looks like. So this is the, the, the casting of raft and this is, you know, raft because it's a, you have a S plus 13 structure over this foundation. So you require heavy reinforcement and uh, you have to do um, heavy concrete, uh, mass concreting as well. You can see this uh, now, um, you know, after casting that um, raft, um, you, you, you have to have this kind of uh, um, the shear wall. And then once you reach at the plinth level, you put a plinth beam and then uh, you uh, do the tunnel form. And this is how the tunnel form looks like uh, once you have come, as I was telling you, once you come to the ground, so at the ground you have a plinth and over that plinth you start putting these tunnel forms. And these tunnel uh, tunnel are L-shaped customized uh, form work, which is, as I told you, uh, is made in the factory and brought to the site and these L kind of thing are inserted they it has a arrangement of wheels and so it is put like this and then you have an outer shell which is being put here uh, over the already laid reinforcement and then you will be concrete and what you see here uh, these are strut steel strut to support uh, uh, this unsupported lens um, of that form one system so this is a closure look and anyway don't worry we'll take you to, uh, to the site and you will actually be seeing uh, the casting uh, yourself through your own eyes through night feed so this is how it is being put. So um, it is hoisted uh, through a crane and then it is being inserted over the reinforcement. Okay. And uh, this is that L shape I was talking about, and this is being manufactured in the factory. And these are the typical uh, work cycle. Uh, as you can see, first, what you do is you insert this form work over the already laid uh, um, the reinforcement. So this is how it is being put. Uh, and then you do the concreting and uh, you, you see here. So 
it is being removed from here and then taking it to the upper floor. So this is how it has been taken to the upper floor. Then the second leaf is being second L is taken here, and now this is the kind of enclosure. This is the kind of enclosure you make, and then uh, you put the other, um, you know, tunnel form here and uh, the other side. This is how it looks like, and then you do the, then you lay the the, the 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 reinforcement of slab, and then you do the concrete. So these are the typical stages. So first uh, install, first install the reinforcement, put the tunnel form, then put the formwork, um, the reinforcement of slab, do the concreting, remove that formwork, take it to the next floor. So this is how it looks like. It is from the, the the slab casting. You can see. So once you have laid uh, fixed the form work, then you have uh, you have put the 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 the, the slab uh, the reinforcement along with services and all. Then you do the concreting of entire unit uh, together to give it monolithic structure. So this is again a, um, a closure look. And you, as you can see here, the, after placing the reinforcement, the labeling of concrete is being uh, done. And uh, what you get after you finish, you get this kind of beautiful structure. And if uh, uh, I strongly recommend that all of you may uh, go and visit the kind of finish you see. So this kind of finish, you don't require anything. You don't require plaster and all. All you can do as per your you know, specification and as for the time, you can just do the um, putty and then or otherwise you can directly color wash it. Um, and um, you, you can see the kind of finish we get because we are using uh, this kind of a steel form box, sturdy steel form box system. And since it is a uh, you know tunnel form, so what you get, you get this kind. Why it is called tunnel form? Because you get these kind of tunnels. And since this is not a tunnel, it is a room. So the, the walls, remaining walls are to be filled with infill walls. So here, again, we are using a you know, sustainable technology. Here, these walls are filled with AAC blocks. So AAC blocks are nothing but autoclaved aerated concrete. It's a lightweight concrete. And I think I have a slide where I will explain, uh, will be explaining you. And as you can see here, uh, the size of this block is much larger than your conventional brick size. So it can be, you know, very, uh, and it is lighter in weight. Uh, its weight is around 400 to 500 kg per meter cube. So, um, you know, pretty fast, uh, the, the entire infill wall uh, can be laid. These are just advantages, uh, just to give you a few uh, advantages. It's, it facilitates rapid construction. Um, it, it results in durable structure because uh, there are no joints. And uh, as I told you, the, it's a top class finish requiring uh, no plastering. And uh, another advantage when we talk about uh, sustainability here in this project, as well in Rajkot, uh, we are using the, this concrete is not only of cement, sand and aggregate. But here, uh, the part of the cement is being replaced by, you know, uh, GGBS. It is called ground granulated blast furnace slag. And blast furnace slag is the byproduct of a steel industry. So, in fact, we are using a waste material um, and replacing the part of cement uh, uh, by this GGBS. So, thereby making this concrete uh, green. Uh, okay. And uh, the moment you uh, add these kind of, uh, um, you know, the final materials or this um, uh, in concrete, um, it improves greatly the workability and durability okay and this already explained to you that being box type of structure being monolithic construction it is highly suited uh, to the seismically prone areas and uh, uh, as I, I tell you all time and again that india is a country where we have earthquakes um, and so we have to ensure earthquake resistant construction and being large modular units um, this brings in economy in construction only limitations be for as uh, 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 let me also add here that this is the most widely used technology in India, uh, tunnel form or monolithic construction uh, mono or other aluminium form work system. Only thing with, uh, with this technology is that you have to have a lead time. You just can't start the project. You have to beforehand, um, you know, plan the things and um, give the order uh, because these form works are customized in the factory. So you have to, um, you know. Uh, be in touch with that factory and give the order so that a time, a lead time of three to four months is required before initiation of work. And also another best practice is whenever you, uh, you know, uh, employ these kind of form work systems, always uh, keep one set extra. Okay, so if you require two or three sets, take one more set extra because in, in case of anything going wrong, um, uh, you can always make use of that, um, you know, form work. Uh, another thing is that uh, because it's a you know, pakka 
monolithic concrete construction service lines everything is being put beforehand and then concrete is uh, concreting is being done so post con uh, construction arbitrations are difficult you know uh, like we see in conventional houses uh, at the later stage we put plumbing we put electric lines we remove window we put something else those kind of alterations here are difficult to do it's not that you cannot do it you <coughs> You can do it, but it, it is not advisable. Also, another advantage here, um, you know, the, uh, economy. Uh, so, oh, sorry, limitation here is economy in cost is achieved with larger number of food because you know you have to make this work in the factory. So, uh, certain critical mass is required. So, if you have minimum number of units to be constructed, then only it comes economical. Okay. Another advantage which is not written here uh, is that you know because you are making a monolithic concrete construction here because wall and slab is being cast together. So these walls are normally thinner than your you know normal walls. Normally the wall thickness is uh, 230 mm or 9 inches. Here these walls are 4, four to 5 uh, inches. So uh, so imagine uh, instead of 9 inch wall you have 4 to 6 inches wall. So you get a uh, more carpet area for the same built up area. So your moving space is more for the same built up area in these kind of technologies because you have thinner thinner wall and sections. Now, let me also introduce you that uh, this project is uh, being executed on design and build basis. And to uh, if some of you do, do not know about design and build, design and build is a new procurement process where you know um, you ask the agency to you just give them the the, the 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 area along with your specification and ask them to design and then build. Okay, so the design is also there. Instead of giving them design. We just give them specification and layouts and all, and then they have to do the structural layer and other design and then uh, build it. And here, the agency is from Gujarat, uh, a very famous name in Gujarat, Mr. Malani Construction. I think he's also there um, in this webinar. So he's executing this project uh, um, along with a technology provider, um, Messrs. Ottingard, and their MD, I think Jigna Chu, is also there, um, who will be explaining you um, briefly about the technology if time permits. So. Now, this already explained you. This is the general description. We have still plus 13 floors along with the stair cable, and then uh, height of the building from ground is 43.1 meter. Uh, so it has to be designed for um, you know high wind velocity uh, as well. And uh, the, the the height of a typical floor is 2.95. Uh, so th these are other details. You know, whenever you have to design a building, you have to uh, take loads from Indian standards. So um, depending on the requirement for residential um, for residential buildings, the the live load is 1.5 to 2. Uh, uh, Kilo Newton per meter square, so that is the load being taken. The grade of steel, grade of concrete to be used, it all, all these things need to be pre-decided. So these are the details. Uh, if you are putting a water tank, so that load also need to be taken. What are the internal and external wall wall sizes? So you can see here the external walls are 200, internal walls are 150, and parapet wall is uh, 100 mm. And um, as I told you that you need to design the structure and when you design, you have to um, incorporate, uh, you know, geoclimatic condition of that area into account. So what you see on the right hand side um, is the the, um, the zoning map, the wind, wind zoning map of our country. And this map has been taken from Vulnerability Atlas of India, which is prepared by my organization, BMTPC. So from this, um, you see where Rajkot lies and from that uh, Rajkot, you take the wind velocity and accordingly you incorporate that wind velocity into the design, convert it into a, um, you know, a wind load, wind pressure, and that wind pressure is converted into a, a horizontal wind load and then being uh, applied on the structure to design. Similarly, you need to uh, ascertain the, the seismic zone in which uh, that area falls. And, um, you know, Gujarat is a seat of uh, some bigger earthquakes. You know, the Bhuj earthquake came there, so Rajkot falls in seismic zone 3. So, again, this is a, a curve, uh, this is a seismic zoning map of uh, uh, taken from vulnerability plus of uh, BMTPC. From this, you find out the seismic zoning and using that seismic zone uh, map and, um, you know, multiplied with different factors like, uh, you know, importance factor, response reduction factor. I'm not going into the details of those. You try to find out the horizontal load uh, for which your building needs to be designed. And once you ascertain all these loads, so what are these loads? So one is dead load, another one is line load, then you have wind load and you have earthquake load. And if you're designing in a, you know, a snow laden area, then you have to take a snow load and other loads. Cyclonic, then cyclonic wind need to be incorporated. So with these uh, uh, loading calculations, you need to create the model uh, in computer. So it is called CAD design, computer aided design. And there are a number of softwares available nowadays. Um, here they have used just safe. 
uh, software. Otherwise, you can you might be familiar with Stack Pro, but there are other softwares like Abacus, SAP, ETFs, which are available. So you can create the entire model uh, in the in the computer using these CAD softwares. Then uh, um, you know put these uh, loads. And you know another important thing which I want to teach you here that the building is designed for different load combinations. So there are thirteen load combinations for which building is to be designed. And uh, for uh, out of those 13 load combination, you have to take the worst possible load combination. So okay, for the worst possible load combination, you need to design your walls. And design means what? Design means the thickness of the wall, the reinforcement. The reinforcement means the tire of reinforcement, the spacing of those reinforcement and thickness of slab. So this is how uh, the design is being done. And once you do the design, then you start um, you know implementing it uh, on the field by actual construction this is just for academic purposes m25 and m40 is the grade of the concrete being used in this project and uh, normally the good practice is you have to go, go for mixed design so here milani construction has uh, got the concrete mix design from uh, nccbm one of the premier concrete institute in india uh, with, uh, they have branch in uh, ahmedabad as well as in uh, malavgarh uh, in the ncr region so this mix design is being done uh, there and as you can see uh, in addition to cement we are using ggbs uh, thereby making this as a sustainable material and this is a typical batching plant. Again, another good practice is when you are doing such a large project, you have to have your own batching plant so you can make the concrete. You might have uh, been knowing about ready mix concrete. So if you have small quantities, you can order the concrete. Otherwise, the best thing is to uh, have your own uh, batching plant at the site. So Malani Construction, they have their own batching plant and which uh, is in operation at the site itself. Okay. Also, um, when you make uh, this kind of uh, thousand plus houses or a project of large magnitude, you need it is again a mandatory requirement after Bhuj earthquake that you need to have a um, quality control uh, laboratory at the site itself. So, so that you can um, you know find out uh, the quality of concrete, aggregate, sand, and other material. You can check it at the site itself. Also, let me tell you here that um, what we have done, um, what Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs um, has done, we have employed uh, IIT Madras as third party inspection monitoring uh, agency. So they have their uh, engineers uh, uh, placed at the site. And, um, you know, whenever a concreting work or uh, whenever a new construction takes place at the site, that has to be first checked for its quality uh, through the, in this lab. So you have a sieve, you have a slum test, you have a compression testing machine and other. Now, let me just tell you about uh, these drawings. I think uh, the construction sequence, if I have to uh, tell you very quickly. So, construction is done in two phases. One is substructure. Substructure is nothing but foundation. Substructure is below the ground. And then above the ground is superstructure. And superstructure comprises of uh, your beam column. And in this case, you have shear wall and slab. Okay. And then you have services and finishes. So, you know, the, as I told you that you, once you do the design, then you have to create a structural drawing and this is a structural drawing uh, uh, showing you the foundation detail and what you see here is the, uh, you know, the size of your uh, raft and then wherever shear walls are coming, as I told you, you have to put a raft, I think I will explain here, yeah. So this is a section, if you are familiar with section, you can see here. So first you lay the PCC on an undulating ground, then you put a raft and, uh, you know, over that raft, you have to put another cap, you know, uh, always, uh, you, if you are civil engineer or architect, you might be knowing that the load transfer for transferring the load, you have to do it at a 45 degrees. So you have, you, you just can't, uh, you know, put this um, shear wall directly on a raft. So you have to have this kind of uh, uh, capping arrangement. So um, you have a raft, then you have a cap, then you put a shear wall and over that shear wall, you have a tunnel form work system. So as you can see here, it's written here. Uh, first you level the ground, then you put a 150 mm thick raft over um, 150 mm PC, then you put a raft over that you put uh, the cap and over that you put a shear wall. Uh, so this is um, another, uh, this, uh, it was uh, done, six, you, you can see, and now you will see this was done in January 21, and right now the project is at the advanced stage of completion, and this is the first ever picture of that project site when there was nothing. So JCB was put to, you know, um, uh, excavate the ground to create the foundation pits, and as you can see here. And it is a very rocky terrain, so somewhere, you know, even Malani will tell you that uh, he encountered uh, hard rock as well. So for that, uh, he has to use mechanical excavator, excavators to cut that rock and to create that foundation pit. So this is how that uh, foundation pit is created, and then you lay the PCC, and that over that PCC, um, you put this reinforcement cage of raft, and once you put the reinforcement cage, then you will be concreting, and you get 
this kind of uh, thing. And what you see this reinforcement, this is the reinforcement of shear wall, which will come up to the ground level. And at, at that ground level, you will put a plane beam and over that plane beam, you will put the tunnel form. So this is another picture you can see. So this is the raft. This is that uh, um, shear wall we are talking about. And this is that uh, once you come to that level, you put a plane and over that you uh, put your tunnel form. So this is a finished picture. So now you can't see what uh, went uh, inside the ground. So inside the ground, we had raft, shear wall, and over that shear wall, this is the plinth, uh, plinth and now this is that reinforcement over which your uh, tunnel form will uh, come. You can see this. So this is the finished thing. And now this um, this site is ready to take the tunnel form work. And once you put the tunnel form work, you cast the wall and slab together uh, to create the entire model. Okay, so these are typical details. I just don't want to go into details, but um, you know, whenever you are doing RCD construction, it is very important to look at the structural drawings and those detailing. Uh, this is called detailing. That means how many stirrups. You know, this is uh, any any reinforcement contains. Uh, you know, vertical reinforcement and horizontal reinforcement. And, you know, these um, uh, horizontal and vertical reinforcement are to be tied together to get, uh, you know, integral uh, action. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so these detailing drawings, you know, wherever lap is coming, that lap is to be done uh, properly, then you you know, this is called shear, shear reinforcement or stirrup or links. So these links are also, you know, are to be properly bent in this fashion you just can't um, you know it is uh, it is uh, you know 135 degree you can't bend it on uh, 90 degrees because if you bend it at 90 degree it is not good from earthquake point of view because what happens if earthquake comes if it is a 90 degree joint it will open and once this is set up because this shear reinforcement or link is the link to hold all this vertical reinforcement together so if this link opens up, your um, reinforcement will become redundant. It will be of no use. So you have so this is called detailing. So you have to you know bend this um, uh, link at 135 degree. And similarly, there are other detailing. If there is a termination of reinforcement and you have to add another reinforcement, so what should be the the the, the lap length? Uh, how it is to be connected? What should be the spacing? All these things need to be read from these drawings and then um, that reinforcement kit according to the structural line is to be laid and then concreting is to be done and before doing concreting uh, the third party inspection monitoring uh, agency will come he, they, they will check uh, the reinforcement if it is as for the drawing or not also let me tell you that because we are dealing with new technologies so all these designs which are done by um, uh, the, 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 the the implementing agency they they are being vetted by the IITs or uh, engineering institutes. Like in this case, the entire uh, you know structural design, design philosophy, design basis, all these things are vetted by SV and IIT Surat. Okay, so those designs are vetted and uh, they will put their stamp seal that this design is good for construction. Then it comes to the site and then specifically using these drawings, all the thicknesses, drafting, detailing, everything is to be precisely done using uh, these drawings. So you can see this. So this is that plinth level. After that plinth level, I was talking about. Then you you put this tunnel. What you see here, black thing is the oil which is being put before doing the concreting. And this is to be, this is done to get a smooth surface. If you don't uh, put this kind of oil, then what will happen? That concrete will stick to this tunnel form as well. So once you remove this uh, tunnel form, you know there will be undulation on your uh, um, you, uh, on your surface. So for that to avoid that, you have to put oil. And as you can see uh, here, we are getting a top class finish. So this is how tunnel form will be. And this is a um, uh, you know uh, upper. Um, uh, you can see uh, this is how the the, uh, the the slab reinforcement and this is how it looks like. And then you do the concreting. Again, this is a closer look uh, of this. Uh, you can see, and here the slab is being uh, put. And you know, uh, once you have put this, you remove the formwork, and this is the kind of finish you get. And you know, you can see these kind of holes here. So th these holes are, you know, because you have a um, tunnel form which have two skins. One is uh, on this side, and one is on the inner side. So to keep uniform thickness, those uh, two tunnel forms are to be connected together through these holes. So once that tunnel form is removed, these holes are to be grouted with high, um, you know, rich uh, concrete. Um, 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 and these uh, holes are plugged. 
and this is this is a view um, you know once we have finished about so this is you know the, there, there are dwelling units on this side dwelling units on this side in between you have a corridor and here you know tunnel form as i told you is customized in such a fashion that the the entire floor um uh, you cast together so the entire thing is finished together and this is about that uh, AAC. Again, this is a sustainable technology, and I think GIZ will explain you in their uh, webinars about this. Again, this is a sustainable material. It's, there is no need to use red brick. All of you know that um, fired clay brick is not sustainable because of greenhouse gas emission, you know, using fossil fuel, uh, uh, and also you are making use of top fertile land. So that can be replaced by the umpteen number of options. Precast sandwich panel is one. Here we are using this AAC panel. And if you can see, there, it is called autoclave aerated concrete. Autoclaving is nothing but curing under heat and pressure. And aerated concrete means instead of aggregates, here you create a foam or you create a uh, vacuum uh, uh, through um, you know this kind of mixture. So you have an aluminium powder which is mixed with the um, um, you know the lime um, the gypsum and uh, so that to create voids. And so here there is no aggregate. So when you have a concrete without aggregate, normally it is lighter in weight. And um, as you can see, the density is around 500 kg per meter cube. And the density of um, your brick is around 1800 kg per meter cube. Yeah, yeah, 1800 kg per meter cube. So you can see the 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 the, 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 um, uh, the, the comparison between the density. So it's three times lighter, and you know, uh, being three times lighter in weight means overall load of the building gets considerably reduced. And what does that mean? If you have overall load reduction of the building, so your foundations um, sizes will be less. Also. Always keep in mind, heavier the structure, it will attract more earthquake load. So lighter, lighter the way it is, uh, you know, less vulnerable to uh, earthquakes. Okay, so the AC blocks are being used here. And um, another question comes about uh, services. So please take it from me that um, you know once you are putting the reinforcement and before putting that uh, and tunnel form, you have to you know put these services uh, 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 here um, beforehand. So putting those services, if you are casting a slab, so you have to put those fan boxes, electrical cables, and all those things together, and then plumbing and electrical services, and then you have to do the casting. As regards AC blocks here, you can do in a conventional services okay uh, so th that is all this is just a slide to show you uh, these are the as i've been telling you this is a lighthouse project so we are uh, using the um, top specifications here you, you can see instead of um, you know the, the mild steel door frames and all uvc upvc frames are being used then we are using flush shutters wherever we have wet areas there we are using pvc uh, doors we are using vitrified tiles um, in rooms and kitchens then ceramic tiles anti skid ceramic tiles are being used in wet areas then quota stone i think now instead of quota stone we are using tiles only for corridor. In fact, this was suggested by Malani. Uh, then instead of quota stone, because thickness varies, so um, he was uh, kind enough that instead of uh, quota stone, he's doing vitrified tiles for flooring in common areas as well as staircase steps. Another important thing which I want to tell you here is we are not compromising as regards infrastructure facilities or services. And some of the good practices you can see here, we have solar street lighting system, then all the street lights are with LED and solar. Then we have a sewage treatment plant and we have a waste water management system in uh, place. We also have rainwater harvesting and uh, you can see storm uh, RCC storm water drains, then the sewage pipelines and all the solid waste management is also there. Horticulture facilities are also being provided here. So um, just four slides to take you through uh, the photographs of the, the, the project. Um, uh, right now, out of 11 blocks, eight blocks are already completed. And um, on a war footing level, uh, work is going on on block two and block five. Uh, sample unit is already completed, which was shown to you in the film. Masonry work is also completed for most of the block because once they do the tunnel, they take the tunnel to the upper floor. Then at the floor below, they immediately start the masonry work. And once the masonry work is finished, all services and all in that um, block, electrical services are being initiated uh, simultaneously. So these are the pictures, as you can see. So how beautiful you, you see it looks here. You can see here, this is a tunnel, and then this is a finished that wall. So this is how this, uh, and this S plus 13 building is still plus 13 story. And this is how that reinforcement looks like, you can see. Here, this is concreting is being done, um, uh, and you you know after putting the, the the tunnel form, the concreting is being done, and here it is finished, and here it is being done. And this is a finished block uh, you can see on in tower one and tower two. 
this is another view uh, so this is the actual photograph from the site um, you know and you can see the date it was done in march 22 uh, uh, you see this was on 4th march and this was on 7th march so uh, you know pretty fast uh, experience and the other towers the progress is like this and you know you have to create a platform to slide that uh, tunnel form so this is the kind of platform is being made and then tunnel form is being uh, slided inside this is uh, tower 7 and tower 8 uh, you can see all finished and once they have finished these towers they are also doing the the putti here so that once putti is being done then you can do the color washing another view okay you can so uh, this is, you know, my team has put, you know, this is the project, um, uh, the this is one of the projects which was done with monolithic in Chennai. This is a finished project site. So that will be all uh, uh, for now. And, uh, you know, you can write it down. In fact, uh, uh, we have employed, uh, you know, um, live feed uh, for all these project sites. So you can go to GSTC dash India dot gov dot in website and uh, you can um, access all these project site and you can see the live streaming and uh, uh, if you want to do uh, you know we'll be conducting more programs on uh, these uh, project sites as well in future um, in future uh, also now uh, we will take you uh, to the virtual tour of this lhp site so thank you and uh, team if you are ready we can take them to the Sir, we are connecting uh, the live uh, view. Okay. So, whenever you are ready, we will uh, take them. Uh, so, uh, just ask. Oh, no, it's, it's already connected. We'll just share the screen. Okay. And there is a 360 view that we'll be showing to the project site. Uh, I would request uh, uh, Salisar or maybe somebody from Malani to explain the, uh, the view that we are in from the site right now. This is a live thing of LHP Rajko. Malani sir, you can explain. If you want to explain, you can explain. My name is Jignashu. Yeah, Jignashu. I think uh, we welcome Jignashu and a uh, big applaud for Jignashu for uh, you know bringing this technology to India. And also, I must thank uh, Mr. Malani, Manoj Malani, for uh, doing this project meticulously and doing it pretty fast. So, if you want to explain, because you are at the site, Malani, uh, uh, you can explain, or otherwise, if you want me to explain any technical thing, I will be happy to do so. So, over to you, Malani and Jignashu. And uh, you can uh, take them to. Uh, no video. Thank you, Dr. Zerb. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Hello, go hello. Ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, Dr. Zerb, thank you so much. I, I would request you to explain things because you have explained the whole things uh, such a nicely and given us so good training. Uh, we would like to listen to you and we would like to have more insight from you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please help us. So, a tunnel form how the, the tunnel form is being manufactured, the, the, the process before. He just, okay. Uh, okay. Sir. Ah. Yes, yes, sure, sir. So, okay. I will I will request uh, the cameraman if he can show the tunnel. So, tunnel is really two inverted L's. So, it is joined together and we built the room. But the French guy invented this technology and because he gave the name uh, English name called tunnel, so it's why it's called tunnel bomber. You can say the root bomber. Uh, this is the same section as Dr. Saab has explained, and it's pretty fast because we do together. So, first we manufacture this uh, tunnel bomber, which is actually a modular panels. The modular panels are of 2500 millimeter, 1250 millimeter and 625 millimeter and uh, we join these together at the site according to the site requirement as Dr. Sai explained this is an kind of a customized form so we customize the form such a way that we can build the apartments as per our requirement these forms can be increased in the length it can be increased in the width and it can increase in the height by adding the additional panel from one one uh, project to another project so it is not project specific the 
forms when it has assembled together it becomes a project specific but after that it is in modular forms which can be taken to the next project so just to add here uh, because dr sir you said that this is very important uh, for all the participants to know that even if your project size is a small but you can repeatedly use this form from one project to another project so it becomes a uh, repetitive use and it becomes economical in a long run so it's a long lasting forms it can give you 1000 repetitions guaranteed so you need to see that how you can use this and which is pretty pr simple to design like it is designed for the grid and when you design the buildings in a grid as dr sir have explained it becomes more rigid for the uh, against the earthquake and all kind of and wind forces so it becomes sustainable uh, i think this is an information which i would like to give and if you would like to know more about us you can go on a, a website called www.utinot.com and i'm sure dr sahib is here to support all of us uh, and to give more knowledge over to you dr sahib please help us thank you, thank you so much thank you jignashu and uh, now this is uh, i think i will ask my cameraman to move and uh, we will try to explain you i think most of the things i have already explained you but uh, yes okay let me explain this so uh, dear participants what do you see here uh, you see here the finished tunnel okay so this is this is the ground floor or uh, you can call it this is a street huh? so this is the street so this is already finished then you have another floor uh, constructed over this and above this if you can take above this which craft iske upar le jao jara sa yeah aur le jao thoda sa aur le jao thoda sa aur so that we can see the people working there and your web costing it is not uh, coming clear it is not it is uh, hazy so what do you see now you know they are right now so this is finished now they what they have done they have removed the tunnel form and taken uh, taken it down and they are uh, they will be preparing they will be you know putting the oil they will be uh, seeing it for damages if any and then in the meantime the other uh, team they will be you know putting the reinforcement so right now what they are doing is they are putting the reinforcement and as you can see for each floor they have different teams and right now i think malani has uh, employed more than 350 uh, workforce at the site so this reinforcement is being put so once this reinforcement right now reinforcement work is being going going on then their supervisor will come with the structural drawing he will see each and every joint and let me also tell you when you put this reinforcement wherever you have uh, you know two reinforcement horizontal vertical you have to put a binding wire so that is also very important because if you don't put that binding wire those two reinforcement will not be able to hold uh, together so this reinforcement is being put and once the reinforcement work is over uh, the site engineer uh, of uh, ministry as well as the third party inspection uh, agency engineer will check the reinforcement then and then tunnel form will be inserted once so inside tunnel form and uh, that l which jignesh uh, was talking about that will be put and once you put those l you get a slab surface so over that slab surface the reinforcement of slab will be put and then that slab reinforcement will be connected with the rein or thoda niche kar sakte ho yeah so that reinforcement will be uh, connected with the reinforcement of these wall and then concreting will be done so uh, i think it is clear uh, from here to you uh, so and uh, this is a very you know uh, efficient construction system so i am using a word construction system means structural system so this structural system comprises of shear wall so instead of columns you have a concrete wall and it is called shear wall because it is very effective in transferring uh, load of slab through shear uh, to the foundation so this is a slab wall system okay और कोई टेक टू मनीष यार इसको बोलो कुछ और साइड तो दिखाए कैन यू टेक अस टू या शो सम अदर ऑपरेशंस व्हिच आई कैन एक्सप्लेन टू देम ओके सो दिस आई ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन यू सो दिस इज अनदर फ्लोर सो हियर यू कैन सी हियर 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 सो दिस इज फिनिश्ड सो दिस टावर इज फिनिश्ड एंड नाउ फ्रॉम हियर दे हैव मूव टू दिस टावर एंड व्हाट यू सी हियर दिस इज द टावर कैन दिस येलो so for all these projects another limitation or you can say because you require heavy machinery plant and machinery to execute the project because tunnel forms are quite heavy so you need to have a tower crane 
और टावर केन को लगाने के लिए यू हैव टू फर्स्ट कंसल्ट दी टावर केन फाउंडेशन एंड इट हैज टू बी डन बिफोर एंड सो आफ्टर टेकिंग ओवर द साइट मिस्टर मनोज मलानी ही ही ऑर्डर टू टावर केन्स एंड देन प्रिपेयर दी टावर फाउंडेशन एंड देन दिस टावर केन वाज पुट एंड थ्रू दिस ऑल द ऑपरेशंस आर बीइंग डन थ्रू दिस टावर केन सो नाउ वंस द वर्क इज फिनिश्ड हियर दे गो टू दिस एंड पुट वन ब्लॉक ओवर अदर यूजिंग दिस टनल फॉर्म्स और कोई व्यू दिखाओ whatever views you have this already explained you can see here they are uh, preparing the reinforcement tool is the most important area and once it's prepared then tunnel 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 l tunnel forms will be now we are lifting the tunnel forms uh, sir you can show them they are lifting the tunnel forms now yeah i think you are kind enough uh, to show our uh, participants the actual uh, real time uh, lifting of tunnel form so if you can show that and which craft team if you can uh, you know focus it uh, properly then it will be for everyone to see mera camera is sahi position pe thoda sa yeah yeah the camera need to be hold there and yeah zoom yeah. that will be more yeah. so we can is hazy on fixing the the tunnel and the... tunnel is on the back side so camera could be that side Unfortunately, is on the back side. Uh, we could have explained them through our picture only. Yeah, I think Jignashu has a very good picture. In fact, you can go to Ordinar website and uh, see the tunnel form uh, film. In fact, you can go to GSTC website as well, and there we have a film on uh, tunnel form. You know, prepared by Ordinar. So that film. Sir, the is video good. streaming quality is good. I think your internet is weak. Uh, here, uh, the streaming quality is very good. Okay. तो बस दिखाओ तो टनल फॉर्म तो दिखाओ भैया टनल दिखाओ टनल Uh, 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 I think uh, you can just tell them about the speed because the kind of speed you are achieving for this project is uh, very fast. You are doing. Okay, now before that, you see. So this is that L we were talking about. So they are lifting, they are hoisting that uh, L through the tower crane. So it was first put down, and it was uh, seen for damages and all. Then oil was painted on the side where concreting was come. Now they are taking it to the designated location. So you can see, yeah, that's very good. That's a very good shoot. Yeah, good. now you can see they are lowering it down and uh, now they are taking it slowly because now it is slower because they are uh, reaching to this uh, lower level so now here it will be guided by supervisors and the labors and uh, you know they they have put some um, strings there so through that string uh, they will pull it slash, you know lower it down so this is that and uh, and you can see it is being lowered uh, with the help of um, supervisor and other uh, and you you know you require you need to train the labors uh, which are present at the site uh, okay mark can see dikhai degi isliye aise sabhi ji log dekh rahe ho you you can see now uh, there are three uh, three to four labors workforce uh, they are already and you know this uh, the tunnel form has wheels so once they put it down they will through wheels they will insert it inside and you can see there is another l which has already been put so this is one l if you can see the mouse and now they are putting this l so once they put this l you get the entire slab and then you can put the reinforcement of slab here you see here and here again they have the arrangement so that uh, there is a you know like slide and lock sliding and lock kind of arrangement so it will you know the perfectly both these else will be perfectly fit together am i right you know shu 
sir. <laughs> perfectly right, sir. You you can explain this, and uh, I will request uh, Manoj Bhai also to talk about this uh, tunnel form that how fast is working and how happy he is about tunnel form. Manoj Bhai, sir, tell us. Sir, this tunnel form work is at least one floor. ढाई से तीन दिन में कंप्लीट कर सकते हैं और एक एक बिल्डिंग है वो थर्टी फाइव टू फोर्टी डे में एक बिल्डिंग हम इतने ऐसा फोर्टी दिन में फोर्टी डेज में हम दो बिल्डिंग तैयार करते हैं तेरह मजले का और एक फ्लोर का बारह घंटे बारह घंटे में सब हम ऑलमोस्ट सभी स्लैब हुआ है वो बारह घंटे में हम स्लैब रिमूव करते है एक फ्लोर का एरिया कितना है एरिया भी बता दो पूरा फ्लोर एरिया जो तीन चार दिन में आप कर रहे हो स्क्वायर मीटर पांच सौ बीस स्क्वायर मीटर नाउ यू सी यूनो देर ठीक बोल रहा हूँ So in three days he finished the floor. Floor. Yeah, so one floor comprises of eight dwelling units and each dwelling unit has a, a carpet area of forty um, square meter. So built up area will be yes. yeah, yeah. more. So the entire eight units are being made in three to four days, and um, you know in, within twelve hours he removes this form work, prepare it for the upper floor. Of course, yeah. Upper floor. So it's pretty fast, and um, we have seen your progress, Malani ji. You have really progressed very fast. You know, after COVID, they really, you know, put all the towers very quickly. So now you can see here they are putting that uh, uh, tunnel form, the, the other L uh, in 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 position. It takes some time because you have to put it perfectly. Because if you don't put it perfectly, once you put it perfectly, then you have to check it for plumb, vertical ness, horizontal ness. All those things need to be checked before doing the concreting. Because if you don't put it properly in position, and if you do the concreting, the entire thing will go waste. So you have to check it for plumb, horizontal, vertical, sway, deflection, everything. Any other thing you want to show, uh, which crafting? Sir, I think this is the crux of the thing where uh, we can show them the participant that it is only takes ten minutes to finish uh, yeah, yeah. one component and twenty minutes for the entire room uh, shuttering to move from one place to. So this is very important for them to know that how we can work and how fast we can do. The another part is uh, the very good part is we have only two types of them. You can see the one guy is moving the spanner from for the top, and the another guy is moving the spanner for the bottom. So there are only two spanners. So system is pretty simple. So we call it industrialization of construction. So you don't need a skilled people. We need a people to be trained, and when they do the same thing day in and day out, they are getting trained very fast. Uh, you can see here the blockouts, the walls, uh, doors. The part of the wall which is going to be removed, all the doors and windows, and clear tunnel form. Sure, all the participants must have understood very well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir. Okay. Thank you, Jignachu. Now I think uh, all of, it is now understood by all of you. You can see here. This is this is finished tunnel form, and here he is preparing the reinforcement. And half of the L is put. And as Mr. Mehta Jignachu was telling you that all doors, windows, air pollution, plumbing, all, all everything is in place. And then this uh, tunnel form is being put, and then concreting will be done. So as uh, we show, showed you in the earlier um, photograph, um, you know, that they, here now they are checking it for verticality and all those things. And it's it it, it has a hydraulic system, so. Verticality, horizontality, diffraction—everything can be controlled through those jacks and all, isn't it? Yes, sir. But it's not hydraulic, but it's mechanical jacks. Mechanical jacks. Okay. Uh, just to correct you, yeah, it's a mechanical jack. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So right now you can see, like yes. you lift the car and all. Similarly, he's trying to, um, you know, see its uh, horizontal uh, thing, plumb and all. Right. Okay. 
Very so true. I think it is well understood by all of you. So witchcraft team, if you have any other, uh, you know, the camera, or if you have any other thing to show, just show so that we can explain. Otherwise, we move to next session, next part of the session. So you see, as he's zooming uh, in, you can see this the entire. This is the entire, uh, uh, you know, uh, portion of uh, that tunnel form. And uh, the C. Jignachu is a technology provider. So he made this customized homework in his factory in Pune. Then it was sent here. And now Mr. Malani, who is the agency, they are using it for this project. And another important thing, which he told, I think you didn't hear that once the project is over, it can be given back and it can be recycled or otherwise you can use it in, a, if you have a project of similar kind, you can use it or otherwise it can be, you know, recycled. Isn't it Jignachu? Can it be recycled? It can be. Yes, sir. This can be recycled. You can you use, uh, you can do a lot of things. In fact, that's why we have came up with the idea to rent this okay. just to give you the, uh, on this platform to inform you that in future we are coming up with the rental option so that in future people can rent for the smaller buildings and they can return it back to us. Okay. So you know, maybe next year we will come up with a few yards and we will start renting these okay. forms. Okay. Okay, so and you, you can see this is again a tunnel form which is uh, put uh, at the, the at the ground. Now, now, yeah, yeah, this is the pattern look. Yeah, good. Another view of that tunnel form you can see here. The best part of these forms is we are talking in terms of millimeter. Yes. All the all the tolerances we are talking in terms of millimeter. So it's kind of an industrialized job where we get perfect finish and we get perfect uh, uh, the levering. So it's very easy to fix the doors, windows and the finishing. Yeah. So it takes very less time to finish the project and it can be completed very fast. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think this is also a very important point. I always say if, uh, you know, if you really want to see the sophistication, you know, form work, everybody understands. You just go and visit the factory where this form work is being manufactured. They are using... Uh, you know, highly sophisticated CNC machines so that tolerance is plus minus one to five mm, seven mm. So there is no room to, you know, uh, inaccuracy there. So any form work, uh, you know, the factory, if you visit, they are using highly precise equipments and paraphernalia uh, to manufacture this kind of form because there is uh, little margin to error because everything is pre-decided, your position of doors and windows. So it has to be done in a highly precise manner. And that's what Jignachu was trying to tell you. Sir, you can talk about this AAC block and finishing. AAC block we already told. Already yeah. told. Already told. Okay. So here you can see they are putting this AAC block and I already explained you. Once the tunnels are created, you have to fill, um, you know, you have to infill the walls which are remaining with masonry. So masonry is the generic word. It can be concrete block masonry. It can be brick masonry, it can be any sandwich panel system, which I explained to you here. Uh, in this project, we are using AAC block. And uh, I showed you a slide of AAC block. AAC block is nothing but an aerated concrete. So it's a lightweight concrete, which is uh, uh, produced in aluminum powder, uh, cement, lime, gypsum. Uh, and they are of very light in weight, 400 to 500 kg per meter cube. So all these infill walls, once the tunnel is ready, these infill walls are being uh, laid uh, using these AAC blocks. And being lighter in weight and being lightweight concrete, there is no aggregate. They are thermally efficient. And being light in weight, the overall uh, cost effectiveness is achieved because you get less loads on the foundation. I think I explained that uh, this. So if there is no other, if you can take us to the batching plant, we can show them batching plant or any other infrastructure facility. Malani sahab kuch dikhana hai, otherwise you will... So you can see here, this is that stilt, and then uh, there are floors. At, at each floor, we have uh, eight floors, and um, four, uh, you know, four units on one side, four units on the other side, and in between, we have a corridor. If, if you can show them... That the, 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 Finished 
ओके नो शूज नो शूज हाँ सैंपल हाउस नहीं कोई बात नहीं बिल्डिंग्स एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वी ऑल्सो है सोशल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन फॉर्म ऑफ यू नो आंगनबाड़ी वन इज आंगनबाड़ी अनदर वन इज शॉपिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स या so the, this was all about uh, this project and uh, this you, as i told you that every uh, the lighthouse project site we have uh, installed uh, cameras uh, and uh, live feed we are getting uh, at the ministry so we can see uh, the the live status of these projects and right now this is the live webcasting being done for you maybe because of when with uh, the, the the pictures are not clear but you can see now uh, he is taking us around and uh, this floor is yet to uh, that tower is yet to start which he showed so this this tower is remaining there are only two towers which are remaining yeah. one 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 only sorry one one tower is remaining you can see and next time when we when we meet i think this tower uh, will be we, we, uh, we will be starting sir april april end mein sab tower khatam ho jayega thank you very much very nice very good progress and, uh, i encourage all of you there that we are you know lot of students and uh, you know the members of architecture and uh, engineering colleges they are visiting this project site so um, and this technology is being recommended uh, for mass housing and especially in areas where you have uh, high wind velocity or you have uh, high seismic zone uh, uh, or e even if you have high rain water Rain, uh, rain, rain. So there, you can use this technology. Advantage is you you don't have any joints. You don't require any maintenance. So low maintenance. Hello, any questions? Is the answer clear? So uh, now uh, I think uh, with this uh, we come to the end of this session. And uh, if uh, you want to add something, Malani Sir, or because you are the 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 persons who are doing this project at the site, Jignacho or Malani Ji, you have to add something. Uh, to enhance the knowledge of our participants, not about the technology, but otherwise also, uh, so you can say otherwise we will move to uh, next session of uh, Q and A. So I will just uh, go to chat box and uh, try to read your questions. So uh, any other anything you want to add, Malani ji, or uh, anyone from PMU or from Ministry. <coughs> जीआईजे Uh, that is the end of your for you sir i can say and the board of thanks so you say in the last you can uh, tell about your initiative about thermally uh, comfortable buildings and climate smart buildings at the end <laughs> meantime i will take questions and jignashu please stay if there is some question related to you uh, or malani please uh, help me out okay so first question unable to see video sorry there was a delay there are you sir okay Uh, so dear sir, can you share the PPT as the PPT has lots of user information? So to answer this question, uh, please write it down. You can just go to gstc-india.gov.in website, or otherwise type my name. My name is Shalish Kumar Agarwal, or otherwise type BMTBC. You will get presentation as well as audio visual capsule of this presentation on LHP. Okay. on youtube search my name shalesh kumar agrawal or bmtbc or go to bmtbc.org website or go to gstc website 
you will get this presentation as well as audio visual um, presentation of whatever I presented to you. Okay. Okay. So I think Manish has already written that this presentation is available. And in case you are not able to uh, Hello. Uh, download it, you just uh, write down my email ska ska at the rate bmtpc.org. I will send it to you. Of course, in, chat, in chat box, there are two questions. Yeah, so the, after this, thank you, thank you, Chaudhary. Uh, Girish, you are also there. The, the PPT will be available to GST. How affordable is this technology in a smaller scale project? Uh, that's a, that is a very good question, and I will ask uh, uh, Jignashu, you answer this first, then I will answer. Yes, sir. Uh, because oh. everyone, yeah, how affordable is this technology? In a, let me first tell you that this the project which is being done by Malani. Here we are making 1,144 houses with high specifications, and the project cost is 50%. I think it is 20% less than the, the, the conventional cost of construction. So in last code, the project is the project which we are doing. The project cost is 20% less than the project cost which would come using plinth area rate of CBW. So for this minute, I can tell. But about the smaller scale project, would you like to say something? Yes, sir. I would like to answer this question. Very good question for a smaller scale. But the scale is need to be defined what is small. Like we always say that if you have more than 150 repetitions, this is uh, at par with your conventional system. So if you have more than 150 repetitions between 100, 125 or 150, it is par with your uh, conventional system. And if you go more repetition, you save a lot. So second thing would, I would like to say, if your project is small, but if you are going to do a lot of projects, a small projects, this is a modular system. So you can reuse it for your next project by adding some forms or by reducing some forms. So you can increase the width, you can decrease the width, you can increase the height, or you can uh, increase the length or decrease the length. So you have all the opportunities available for the next project. So it is not only for one project, these forms are a long-term forms. So it's a, it has got a very long life and you can use it for the small projects. And to support small projects, we are coming up with the model, which is called a rental model. And you can contact us and we will take it forward. Okay. This has answered the question, sir. Yeah, very well, very well. You have answered, and uh, I think now this this technology can be used once they start this rental kind of thing. And uh, just to uh, request you that what you can do is uh, to make project more viable. You can you know once you supply this formwork, you can take it. Uh, you know you can buy it back. Like for aluminium formwork, what they are doing once the project is uh, over 30 percent on a 30 to 40 percent salvage value, they take that aluminium formwork back. From uh, from that uh, implementing uh, uh, agency or uh, uh, company, so great idea, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, we also come up with yeah. idea. I will discuss with my French okay. team, and we will come back. Okay. Uh, next is I think uh, it is for. Can we get the information about manufacturing of these materials? For yes. Study, uh, yes. Okay. Basically, it's a high carbon steel. Yeah. Uh, what we are buying and we are making manufacturing from the high carbon steel. It's a sustainable material. Uh, the gentleman wanted to check the sustainability of them. So this is a sustainable material and it's a high carbon steel. So you can uh, actually uh, you can reuse or you can refurbish or this can be again converted into steel yeah. after the scrap value. Okay. So okay. the issue of the material is not there. Like maybe he is thinking in the terms of a green material. So it's a very high sustainable material. Okay. So uh, I think the Jignashu answered about the tunnel formwork. And if you are asking about the building material, so here we are using, uh, you know, for walls, we are using concrete and steel. So steel, uh, uh, as you know, steel uh, and concrete here, as I told you, it's a mixed design. And here we are using GGBS. So it's a sustainable thing. Part of the cement is being replaced by GGBS. And it's a mixed design. So uh, it's sustainable. So uh, if you want to study this mix design, uh, that mix design I already showed you. Uh, so uh, you can, we are using M25 and M40 concrete. 
with ggbs uh, as the material so uh, you can study the sustainability of this material and steel is uh, you know complying with indian standards so is 7 um, 1786 is the code and here we are using fe 500 tmt bars okay next uh, can i share this is manish uh, then uh, from where we can, yeah, this we already answered. I think, uh, Yashwant, if you want to know something else, you can just write to us. So we are using concrete, steel, and manufacturing of this material that tunnel form, he already explained to you. We request other participants, okay. How affordable is already explained? Sir, as far as the earthquake resistant design is concerned, this will take care of zone 3 and above, 4 and 5. Pardon, again, tell me what you are asking. As far as earthquake resistant design is concerned, yeah. this uh, technology yes. will uh, comply with all the requirements. Excellent. As I was explaining you, uh, in fact, I showed you a slide where I showed you the uh, seismic zoning map of India. So Rajkot falls in seismic zone 3. So it is designed for seismic zone 3 um, earthquake load. And you know, you yourself see it is a, I, I will give you another example, but before that it is a shear wall slab construction. So shear wall construction is excellent for as far as earthquake resistance is concerned and without any problem high rise you can go in even in zone uh, 5. In fact, I'll give you the example of uh, Bhuj earthquake only, and I'll give you the example of Rajkot itself. In fact, at uh, that time uh, when this earthquake came in 2001, I was in Central Building Research Institute, and uh, you know, IO, IOCL building stock in Rajkot, uh, which is, uh, you know, during that 2001 earthquake suffered a lot of damages. And uh, we were invited, We were. Uh, I was a scientist that time in Central Building Research Institute. So I was invited to study that, and we found that those buildings were on stilt and the column was same, you know, similar column um, at the, uh, at the, uh, on the stilt as well as on the upper floor was same. So what we did, we replaced that column by the chair wall. And after 2001 earthquake, uh, only uh, the chair wall, you know, design and uh, construction was added to the, the Indian standards. So chair wall construction is excellent as far as earthquake resistance is concerned. So zone three, zone four, zone five, anywhere it can be used uh, pretty easily. Also, let me tell you, I also give you example. Right now, the war is going on between Ukraine and Russia. You might have seen one building. You know, as civil engineer, I was quite excited when they showed a building where, you know, a missile is struck to our residential apartment and nothing happened except that localized failure. Do you know what, what system they, they, they are using there? It is this system only, shear wall with the slab. So if you have shear wall, so there will not be a cascading, uh, you know, failure. It will not be a progressive failure. So there will be localized failure because of tear wall and this kind of thing. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think there are no more questions. Uh, uh, yes, there is a question that uh, I want to know whether this construction technique environment friendly. I am asking this because we know concrete produce large quantity of carbon dioxide and in the construction only concrete is used. Uh, dear uh, Atif, let me answer this question to you. See, we cannot replace concrete, we cannot replace steel. So what is the way out? We have to use them optimally. Please uh, watch out what I'm saying. You uh, at the site how concrete and steel is being used. It's being used irrationally. You are putting cement, you are putting sand, using thumb rules, you are getting ready mix concrete, you are keep on adding water, you put reinforcement the way you like. So it is not being used, it is not op optimum use. Here, when you are using this industrialized building system, it is optimized beforehand you decide the quantity of concrete to be used, quantity of steel to be used, how it is to be put, how concrete is to be put, its design, its mixed design, everything is pre-decided. So resource efficiency, as I've been telling you, all these new construction systems are resource efficient. Means whether it is material, whether it is workforce, whether it is any other thing, efficient. So efficiency means you are using everything optimally. So that is one thing which adds to sustainability. And here, another thing is all infill walls are AC and for concrete, we are using GGBS, okay? So the high grade, you know, uh, this is high performance concrete using uh, this, um, this, you know, either fly ash or you, here we are using slack. So that makes this concrete 
sustainable. Also, nowadays, the way steel is being produced because the steel can be recycled. So they are putting steel also into in, because it can be recycled. OK, and anyways, um, the, all these what we have done. Uh, because wherever we are using primarily concrete and steel, there we have given the study to GIZ, who will be studying these projects in detail. And um, once the projects are over, they will come out with the, uh, the report where they will be comparing the embodied energy, um, environment friendliness, uh, greenhouse gas emission with the conventional construction. Okay. So, how much so, GGBS for replacement has happened, sir? Cement replacement yeah. GGBS, how much percentage we have done in this? See, you, you, you reduce the quantity of cement. Yes, yes. How much percentage so, we have done? Yes. Pardon me? How much percentage we have reduced? You could reduce uh, in cement content. 25 percent. Up to 25. Okay. So there is a code you can see there and uh, it's a sustainable material. Okay? okay. But please write, if you are a young person, please take it from me. From today onward, start using these material optimally. I don't say replace concrete. The moment I say don't use concrete, people will after me. The entire concrete in the cement industry. We say use concrete optimally. And how can you ensure that? By taking that construction to the factory. Okay. Please remember this. Let it let there be carbon uh, GHG emissions, but it will be reduced considerably the moment you put good practices and use these materials optimally. Instead of using 100 kg of cement, you are using 50 kg of cement for the same volume. Is it not sustainable? Yes, it is sustainable because it is resource efficiency. Okay. So thank you. Scale of, scale of yeah. project, I think, for adoption of this uh, monolithic construction, sir. I think he has said that the 100 to 150 repetition means almost you are evening out. 200 to 300. Uh, still, yes, 200 to 300. Even 500 companies are claiming. Jignashu, you tell them. You tell him. Yes, sir, you can use 1,000 repetitions. Just to give you an idea. Huh. Yeah, it's a steel. And yeah. just to give you an idea, uh, because I just wanted to say this and take one more minute. That was time to showcase one project in Pune. In 2015, we imported the material from US, a secondhand material for rental. And we gave this uh, to one of the developer. And that material was from 2002, which we got in India in 2015. And we are still using it. And we are still going on. So it must have done more than 3,000 reputation till now. And we still using this material. So it, nothing happens because it is an industrialized way. You can see the people are not uh, uh, putting the hammer on the face of the tunnel or they are not uh, pushing it because it's mechanized. It's used with a crane and it has got a mechanical jack system. So the material is lasting very long. You just have to maintain it by applying the oil and making sure that when you are also storing it for a longer time, you oil these panels. Nothing more you need wonderful, to do. Wonderful. Give me one more point, actually. Yeah, please write. Please don't ask. Please write your questions. Huh? Because uh, please write your questions because your voice is equal. Next question is what is the lifespan of these buildings? How much cost it takes to repair and rehabilitation? Um, you know, lifespan. If you talk about RCC, typical cast in C2 construction, the lifespan is uh, 50 to 60 years. <laughs> and here, because we are using uh, high performance concrete and um, the, everything is uh, done with high precision, the life is much more enhanced here because maintenance is also low. So uh, if I have to put it objectively, life will be more than 70 years. Okay, even the, the share wall construction, the, it, it is claimed that life is uh, even 100 years. There is no authentic proof, but of course the life of these, when you use monolithic concrete construction because of low maintenance and because of no, see why the deteriorations uh, come in the building because of leakages. The major, uh, you know, the culprit is the leakages, water, water seepage. And in this kind of, there are no joints. So when there are no joints, there will not be any leakages, thereby increasing the life of the building. So take it from me, the lifespan is much more than your conventional uh, construction. How much cost it will take to very high? So the, in fact, uh, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel. I have prepared a FAQ also on all these technologies where we have you know written these questions and try to answer so there also you can go through that uh, presentation and find out answer to th these questions so you know post construction alterations are very difficult okay so uh, here you know the, if there is local repair you can do as you do in uh, concrete construction uh, can you please explain about the curing process of concrete 
मलाली साहब क्योरिंग कैसे कर रहे हैं बता दीजिए राइट है क्योरिंग जो अपना नॉर्मल क्योरिंग होता है स्लेप कास्ट करने के दिन के बाद से सात दिन तक जो नॉर्मल क्योरिंग करते हैं ऐसा ही क्योरिंग होती है साहब ओके सो क्योरिंग एज फार एज क्योरिंग इज कंसर्न इट्स नॉर्मल क्योरिंग बिकॉज बेसिकली इट्स आर सी सी स्ट्रक्चर ओके बेसिकली इट्स नथिंग बट इंस्टेड ऑफ बीम कॉलम यू आर हैविंग शेयर वॉल स्लैब कंस्ट्रक्शन so it's a normal curing uh, seven to fourteen days and you know we, they remove and because here they are using some admixtures to gain early strength of concrete so because of um, gaining that early strength compressive strength tunnel form work can be removed and taken to the other floor so the basic difference between this and conventional structure here you, you are uh, you know to 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 have early gain of strength you are adding some admixtures in this. okay so curing and all is uh, similar to your conventional rcc construction okay uh, jignesh you again that i think you have answered what should be the way out for small magnitude works so uh, again i would like to answer for a small magnitude work we can use this panels for if we have an cost effectiveness we required then we need to use it for 100 and 150 times then you can be uh, as equal cost as an conventional cost if you wanted to save you can increase the use and for a small magnitude as i said we will come up with the rental or we have some other products instead of tunnel form we have a products called table forms wall forms and the different other forms which you can use for a small magnitude products and uh, uh, projects and you can use them you can contact us and we can give you more insight about this okay and uh, uh, jignashu if you can write your email id and uh, phone number here it will be of great help to these guys sure sir i will do that on the chat box i will put my his name, name. is jignashu mehta he is a young uh, budding uh, you know technology provider and ready to help everyone so in case you want to visit his factory uh, and if you want to get more insights into this technology you can always approach him um, if you can give his email and all and uh, with this we come to the end of uh, this and you know friends i always say after my lecture this is the beginning this is not the end this is the beginning of our journey uh, into this innovative construction systems and take it from us this is the most proactive step taken by government of india we are um, you know uh, upfront we are using these technologies and showcasing to the entire construction fraternity or to the entire country that these technologies can be used Uh, for the benefits, um, uh, for the greater benefits um, in, in our country. And now all you all you have to do is you have to repose faith in these technologies and start using them. So with these words, we come to the end of uh, today's webinar. But before I, you know, conclude, uh, let me also say thanks to uh, Mr. Vikash Rajan, who is heading uh, GIZ. In fact, this entire webinar. concept uh, and uh, the logistics was done by uh, uh, mr vikas along with mr manish i think you were uh, you you were hearing his voice he is the head of pmu in ministry so the uh, giz in fact they came out with this concept and then um, um, they, you know they asked me to conduct this in fact the entire logistics and everything was done by uh, vikas and his team and uh, pmu team so uh, thanks to you vikas and uh, now you can propose vote of thanks and if you want to tell um, quickly about your climate smart building project and the kind of work uh, you will be doing through field exposure visits it will be of great help to all of them Uh, the participants and once vikas uh, finishes his uh, you know uh, uh, vote of thanks uh, speech after that i will ask all of you to please uh, open your uh, video so that we can take a photograph you know like we take group photograph we will take a online group photograph of everyone so i will ask everyone to open their uh, you know camera after vikas speaks yeah thank you thank you dr agarwal it was very informative and very impressive i must uh, i must tell you, uh, you. and and i i am and i am deeply uh, thank thank to the to the participants who are all all present throughout the session and had a very good informative informative session from from your team that's what that was very impressive uh, and i i have very deep gratitude to 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 our joint secretary and mission director uh, mr kuldeep narayan ji he uh, uh, he was he was the uh, brain behind all these things and he wanted to 
utilize this live uh, laboratory to the greater extent and to show the world that what India is doing at present. So thank you very much, Mr. Kuldeep Narayan. And I also would like to thank Mr. Arthi Gautam and his team, uh, uh, Manish Ji as well, who has a very good constant effort to take this construction technology, this uh, new uh, new uh, era of LHPs into the greater height. So that was a great job done by all these uh, uh, persons behind, behind this great show. So thank you very much. And I would also like to thank uh, uh, Jignashu Ji and his team, Malani Ji and his team, GIZ uh, over there and LHP cells and of course not not forget BMTPC team uh, because without without them uh, this is not going to have uh, we're not going to have this type of success over the over the last last couple of years on LHPs and consistent technologies. So, so this is this is very great job and we will be continuing this type of, of webinar till November as you uh, as you said sir we will be. Uh, uh, doing this approximately 40 numbers of webinars for different technologies on, on different technologies and with, with, with different LHP cells, with different LHPs. So there are lots of uh, uh, learning experience that has to come uh, uh, after this. We will be also organizing a hundred number of training programs this year on new technologies, on thermal comfort, on energy efficiency as well. So there are lots of things which is, which is coming up. As far as GIZR is concerned, we are a German government organization and, and, and are supporting Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs to, to, to have this type of uh, uh, sustainable building construction, sustainable building materials into, in, into the place. And we are also associated with LHPs. And, uh, and you know, uh, we will be coming out with the analysis of these LHPs, how, how they are sustainable and what are the results uh, of this, uh, this uh, analysis that is being uh, that will come out in the month of May or June, most probably this year. So uh, you will find many things which is which is sustainable in these in these LHPs. And you rightly said, uh, also about the AC block that has been used. And you you can see from the picture from the live uh, uh, feed that from the west side, when the when the sun is coming to the wall, the, on that wall the AC blocks were installed. So that is the way that we are looking towards the passive design of a of a building and we are uh, we are very much into the into the job and uh, and and i'm sure that the the next the next uh, construction uh, mission of of mohua will come out in a big way with all sustainability issues so thank you very much and thank you to all the participants to make it make this event a grand success thank you very much so over to you sir Okay, thank you. And if all of you, I request all of you to please uh, switch on your camera so that I can take a photograph. Okay. Now, thank you very much. You have been wonderful audience. And in case we are not able to answer your queries, please do write to us. And uh, as I told you, please try to use uh, the information which is available uh, through our websites and uh, start using these technologies. Okay. So I'll just take a photograph. One minute. Come on. Thank you. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, Pooh, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. That was an amazing presentation, I must say. So thank you, Can I join in because I'm currently outside India. And, yes, yes. Uh, whatever you have been doing, I think we need to take you with us in every country we go because we are currently working in six okay. or seven countries also trying to do this uh, similar project. And everywhere we are now basically using this LHP in indoor as our uh, project showcase so that, that see this is happening in india so it can happen anywhere in the world and with, with your support there's nothing else we want thank you in fact girish is the young entrepreneur and uh, we are using his technology i showed you that rising uh, japan uh, cement eps panel system in fact he brought this system along with his father uh, to india he stays abroad but during COVID time, he was forced to stay here for three years. And uh, we will be taking you to the indoor site. And there, uh, that time, Girish will be there uh, to share his experience about that technology uh, that to all of us. So thank you, Girish. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the appreciation. Thank you. 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 Thank you.